Hello and welcome to the Monday edition of the Lunch and Learn. If you're watching this post-production, please type in the number one. This will just help us uh, understand the kind of audience that we're receiving and that are following and watching our videos. But in any case, today we're going to be talking about my first year in business and the business strategy I'm going to be taking on in, 18, in 2018, which basically um, is a new way um, that I'll be talking about. Now we segueing off to the live people. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Segio, thank you so much for tuning in, my brother. How is it going? Hoping that you are having a uh, fantastic Monday. Can you type in where you are tuning in from, bruh? Can you tell me where you are tuning in from? That would just help um, with us knowing, you know, the type of audience we are attracting and who exactly is watching these shows right here. See, my name is Prosper Tarovinga, and I believe that if you're running an online business, it definitely has to be profitable and you have to be um, enjoying working in it. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, I believe that if you've got also an online business, um, you know, you should be able to create for and also relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. Today, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, your first year in business and how to actually go through that. The reason why I chose this topic is, first of all, a lot of people are going to be uh, starting off um, new businesses in the beginning of the year. And also, I'm starting a new arm of my business, which I supposedly think is going to be. Um, you know a first year for it too because it's going to be sort of separate from uh, what I've been running so far Alison, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Oh, you're having a fantastic weekend still I see Nicole Loins has just joined us too. Thank you so much Hope you're having a fantastic weekend wherever you are like I was saying guys I really believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and you have to enjoy working in it. So basically, that's why every single day from Monday to Thursday, 2 p.m. AEST, um, you know, we sit around here for 30 minutes so we can discuss ways for you to earn more money with less struggle. Lisa says, hi, Prosper. It's great to be here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Derek Hu, my man, thank you so much for tuning in. Derek, can you just type in where you are tuning in from? I always see you, but you never um, participate in our live shows. Just let me know where you're tuning in from. Matthew Corley Smith from Geelong. How are you doing, brother? Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Um, you know, and it's almost Christmas now, so, you know, it's really, really good uh, to see you hanging on there. Merry Christmas to you, my man. All right, so today we're talking about first year in business, all right? I know some of you guys have been running businesses for a while, but there's also going to be that person um, who is probably going to regroup and sit down and start afresh in 2018 or, you know, go in with a different strategy or, um, you know, rebrand or start all over again. So that person is also, um, you know... Um, Starting, you know fresh so that could also be year one of your business Even if you've been doing this for a while the beginning of the year is a bit crucial You have to um, you know check in with your audience to see if they're still following or they got left behind in the previous year Etc. Etc. All right, so that's what we're gonna be talking about since we're entering into a new year And I'm also gonna be telling you about the new business that I'm gonna be starting off in 2018 and don't worry it's not a deviation of what i'm doing it's actually there to enhance it but i'm going to be treating it as a startup in and of itself all right so you know you might be um yes tough thank you so much for tuning in brother and thank you so much for all the help behind the scenes I'm actually going to be talking about, um, you know, the uh, new business and how I'm hoping to incorporate everybody else so that they can actually benefit uh, from what it is that we are trying to launch in 2018 there. Nicole, how's it going? Hope you had a fantastic weekend right there. So if you've started a business, um, you know, and you are, you've gone past the first year mark, please type in the number one. And if you have started a business and you're going into year number two, please type in the number two. 
If you've started a business and you're going into year number three, please type in the number three. I just really want to know the type of people that are watching this. Sheridan Morris, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Today we're talking about how to survive your first year of business. Because with business, it's always day one. Because half of the people or half of the audience that we think we're reaching, they actually don't care up until we've done something really, really significant for them. Scott Woodrow has gone into year number two. Congratulations to you there. And because we all know that 95% of businesses don't go past the five year mark. So we're still okay. We've gone past the one year mark, but we're not totally safe. All right. So going into a new year can actually be the beginning of your business yet again. So this is what I'm talking about today and how you can actually create for and relate to an audience, bringing them into a new year. So um, you know, like everything else, like I was saying, I was really nervous at the, pro at the prospect of starting my own small business because when I started, you know, I had just s literally arrived in the country and I did not know a lot of things and I'd gotten myself into a lot of debt and there I was saying, I want to start a business and I was just asking myself, you know, those fearful questions. Who do you think you are starting a business in a place that nobody knows your name, etc., etc.? And I knew it was going to be a tough world, you know what I mean? I couldn't even make friends. What made me think that people were actually going to buy anything from me? You know what I mean? For, for entrepreneurs, it's not easy. It's not the easiest thing to do. And for a startup to survive, we all know that startups don't survive past the first year. Mama, magadi je ni kodi matamba tiko ga atete. I hope zuru zuru famba zaga na kai kogo. I'll talk to you a little bit later in the episode in the bus. Langton should be zuru famba ere say say kogo. You know, a, a few businesses don't go past the first five years. Do you know what I mean? It's not because they cannot do it, but it's just first of all the anxiety, the fear, the 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 know how of running a business, the. They, the, you know, they don't have the right, um, you know, knowledge around how to actually do it. They don't have the right network. They don't have the right, um, you know, um, support that they actually need. So how did I do it? I literally uh, adopted a positive attitude, you know, about what I really wanted to exist in this world. And that's the reason why I then adopted the virtue of me wanting to make sure every business was profitable and enjoyable, even if my business does not not exist in the world, all right? Jade Fraser, how are you doing? And Sandy Walker, hope you had a fantastic weekend, all right? Because if you don't have governing principles or values that actually go beyond what you're trying to create, it's hard for you to go past the five-year mark, you know? And I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. I'm not going to say um, that, you know, when you just start, it's going to be a walk in the park. It is, however, undoubtedly worthwhile. All right. Now, between freedom, time and money, how many of these things prompted you to start a business? Can you type in the one thing that got you to start your own business? Either was it freedom or just the time or was it money? Can you just type in the comments what got you to start a business? Luke Moroni, thank you so much for tuning in. Tina Howard, how are you? And Maria, thank you so much for tuning in. And, uh, and like I keep repeating, guys, it's not going to be easy. But there is light at the end of every tunnel. Right now, if you have just gone past the first year mark, give yourself a round of applause because now you're going to have to start all over again whatever you were trying to create in your first year. All right? So it's, 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 it's just never-ending struggles. It's never-ending, um, you know, recalibration. And it's always, always, always really, really trying to fit in a, a world that doesn't want you to exist. All right. Matthew says, I couldn't find employment, so I made my own business. Absolutely. Um, and uh, Ansley just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. I remember I read somewhere where Jeff Bezos said that I knew that if I failed, I wouldn't regret it. All right. And but I knew that one thing for sure, he would regret it if he didn't try. Now, can you imagine what he has gone on to create? He didn't even know Amazon was going to be as big as it was. So even if you're in year one, even if you're in year number two, even if you're in year number four or in year number five, you got to consistently keep creating for those that you're going to be taking money off of. Because some people really, 
forget. Once you've gone past the first year, you automatically start thinking that people know who you are. You automatically start thinking that, um, you know, everybody's going to purchase from you. The way it was last year is the same way it's going to be, um, you know, in the next year. Guess what has happened in the process? First of all, technology has changed. Platforms are changing and as we have seen facebook is no longer um you know distributing our content so if you started your business off of a facebook page that means 2018 you have to recalibrate the way you reach out to your audience all right so that is almost like starting all over again all right so how did i do it in in year number one i literally economized a lot of people go out and start renting out plush offices you know, um, you know, or go out to um, a, a center, what do they call those, co-working environments. I have been in this, um, you know, office working from home and have built what I've built, you know, just paying off rent and, you know, laying off business expenses off of the property. All right. Find out if you cannot do that so that you can economize. And the one thing that actually makes people go out of business is cash flow. Because if you're renting out an office, if you're paying, um, you know, somebody else in order for you to house your business, you can't, um, you know, you can't customize it in a way that you want. You can't have enough space, um, you know, to create video or to create a conducive environment that is quiet enough for you to make calls, etc., etc. So figure out how you can economize by using what you already have, which is what I did from year one up until now. We're going into year four um, of the business, and we're still, you know, operating from the one location. You know, and um, Anthony says I love working for myself starting year thirteen now. Wow, congratulations! Uh, changing things up a fair bit and learning all the time. It was really amazing, you know, that you have, um, you know, taken all this time and you haven't fallen back. 13 years is quite a, a substantial figure. So congratulations on you. And answer says 100% agree. Top three reasons businesses fail is failing to plan poor financials and lack of good marketing. Absolutely. Now, before we go any further, I'm really excited about the new projects that I've been working on. All right. So. I know that a lot of people right now that have been following me are falling into this sort of category. Right now, they have no leads. They have no guaranteed income. They're studying everything to get ahead. They have no systems to follow. And I know a lot of people have no processes to follow. They have no freedom and they're tied up to their computer just to fulfill tasks. They, um, you know, they are alone and they don't quite have a network. And I also know that they're struggling to make enough income. Now, this is what I've done. Let me just read what uh, Matthew is saying. Home business is very normal now, even encouraged. It creates freedom to 20 plus years and it leads to 16 of those working from home. Absolutely. And congratulations for all the work that you've created. All right. Now, I am going to be creating in 2018 a platform where small business owners like yourself can actually start advertising at the rate at which big businesses are advertising. All right. So this platform is a small bar to entry for those that have no leads, no guaranteed income, and they're just starting everything to get ahead that they don't have a system to follow and no process to follow. I've created the platform where you can just plug in your business and tap into the traffic that is already being brought in by the expertise and by other businesses so that you don't have to worry about getting leads, getting guaranteed income and um, having a system to follow. All right. So this is what is coming up for our business in 2018. The reason why I'm going to be creating this platform is because one, a lot of people cannot afford even our littlest, um, you know, value package, which starts off at $750 per month. All right. A lot of people cannot afford that. A lot of people um, are missing out on valuable traffic just because they're trying every other system in the market and it's not really working out for them. So that's the reason why we have, um, you know, started creating this platform for those that are in Australia so that we bring leads to you. And if you actually do have, um, you know, um, a, a listing with us or a, a profile with us, you will be privy to this uh, traffic that we're going to be generating now uh bobby said should be an awesome platform looking forward to hearing more absolutely so the platform is 
going to be more or less like a directory of services where we are bringing in a lot of traffic so that you don't have to worry about leads. You don't have to worry about your guaranteed income. You don't have to worry about constantly trying to fidget with, um, you know, funnels, constantly trying to fidget with, um, you know, trying to work out Facebook ads, etc., etc. It's all done for you. All you have to do is pay for you to get onto the platform. And guess what? We're starting off as little as $72 per month. So even if you are just starting off, if you have $72, you have, you know, access to all the traffic we're going to be generating. You have access to all the marketing knowledge, marketing data, and all that stuff that we're going to be creating. Now, wouldn't that be nice? All right. So you don't have to now worry about you going out to get leads, worry about networking, worrying about freedom because you're tied up to fulfill tasks of your business. All of that is done for you for just as little as $72 per month. That's going to be starting off in 2018, and I believe that everybody else's business will now be profitable, and they will actually start enjoying working in it. You know why? Because all of the heavy lifting has been done for them. Now, if you understood what I said, and if you think this is a platform that you can utilize if you're in Australia, can you type in the number one so that you are going to be um, you know, in the front row when we actually launch out this new phenomenon product that's going to assist small businesses like yourself be do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable because what I've been doing is work with those that are willing and able work with those that can actually afford the services that we offer our minimum being a 750 start off and a lot of businesses don't quite have that capital lying around but people would have at least a minimum $72 to start off with um, you know monthly up until they get on their feet and can actually start marketing for themselves all right so that's gonna be year one for us in 2018 and it's gonna be part of a funnel you know um, you know the starting part of the funnel that people are going to be um, you know uh, munching onto all right so like I said you know it's it's all about learning the market it's all about finding out what people actually want and delivering it to them you don't necessarily come up with the biggest idea when you're starting off all right you keep learning finding out who your audience is finding out what is actually missing that your services your skills and your capability can provide because passion and skill plus usefulness equals success so no matter how passionate you are and how skillful you are, if what you're offering is not needed in the market, you're not going to be successful. All those three ingredients are needed, all right? So, you know, there's, there's, there's this one thing that when people are starting a business, they're just going in with what they're passionate of, um, about. But do people really want that product? Are people really longing for a need or do, are they, you know, having sleepless nights because they don't know what your passion is as it is, right? But for all I know is a lot of people don't have leads. A lot of people don't have, you know, networks. A lot of people don't have systems to follow. A lot of people don't have freedom because they're tied up to their computer trying to fulfill, you know, all their marketing leads. And that's where this um, you know, platform is going to come through and they're struggling to make enough income. So the little that they are making, if they can reinvest it back so that they get all those leads coming in, they have guaranteed income and also people to network with. Wouldn't that be nice? Great. So that's exactly what we're going to be working on um, in 2018. So that will be year one for that arm of the business. All right. Now, this is also the lessons um, that I learned from, um, you know, when I really, really started in business and I'm going to be utilizing those lessons, what worked and what didn't work into creating this new product for, um, you know, our business. And guess what I did in the process? I learned as much as I could. All right. No matter how much education you start off with, if you're going to be starting a new business, there's still going to be things that you actually don't know. So it's really, really healthy for you to accept that you don't know everything. You know what I did? I learned from my own biggest mistake because I was really, really stubborn. But now I'm open up to different ideas. And now I've learned from those people that have been ahead of me. And I'm also learning from those that are, um, you know, in places where I actually want to be. 
All right? And when I don't understand something, you know, or something that seems like it's an unsolvable problem, I turn to a mentor and I'm still going to be turning to a mentor so that they can help us bring out this new product and which is going to be year one for, um, you know, Live Long Digital, that side of the business. All right. So if, 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 if this is something that's exciting for you and it's something that you want to hear more about, type in the number one and I will be giving you front row seats for when we actually launch, um, you know, this, this platform for those that don't have a big marketing budget, but also still want to have access to the traffic that's coming in and it's targeted and people that are willing and ready to buy because of the way we're going to be approaching them. All right. So now what I've done is I've, ex I've, I've turned all these, these experiences, um, you know, that I've learned throughout the years, I've turned all the knowledge that I've accumulated from interviewing a lot of people. And, um, you know, I've met a lot of professional um, professionals through working. And now what I've learned is a lot of people out there do not quite know how to market their business. And that's the reason why we're going to be doing this for them. Now, Lisa says, I've been working for myself since 2003 and I love it. Absolutely. I also love your work. Um, and it shows in the passion that you actually have. Now it's time to bring people closer to you and trying to, to actually start attracting the right kind of leads with the right kind of pain that will actually pay you the right kind of money for you to be sustainable and for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. All right. So in this video today, I'm really trying to establish what I did in year one of my business. And for those that are going to be starting their own business in 2018, congratulations. But I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. You really got to figure out what it is that you're going to be offering and how are you going to be offering it? That's totally different. And what is on the market already that other people cannot access, right? So don't rush to have a perfect product right from the get-go, like what I'm doing right now. I already had a product which was a high market, um, you know, um, a high ticket offering. Now I'm putting in something that starts off, um, you know, the funnel where, you know, those people that can't quite, um, you know, uh, um, uh, um, afford our services will have some place to start off with, all right? One of the big mistakes that I did um, when I started off in business was either outsourcing or hiring talent that wasn't the best to start off with, all right? You want to hire people that actually are passionate about building your business, not people that are looking for a paycheck. It's difficult these days to actually um, find the right kind of person who is also half as passionate as, as you are for your business to go off, all right? So you, you're going to start off with a limited budget, all right? But you're going to need people to help you bring your vision to life. And you can't hire many people in your first year because you literally can't afford it. But you also have a lot more that needs to be done. The funnels, the Facebook ads, etc., etc. You know what I found was the best solution? Was to just hire people that are absolutely passionate about actually growing their own business or actually passionate about, you know, helping others uh, grow their business. If you just go for people that are in for the paycheck or people that say, look at my history, I can do the work and they don't offer any more ideas on how you can grow. Those people don't care. They're just going to be hustling you for the rest of your life if you don't pay them on time. All right. It will cost a little bit more to hire on passion than to hire on, 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 on talent. But at the end of the day, the cost really is it will. I mean, I mean, the quality of the work that you get will trump the quantity over time because you don't want to just be hiring people that are not passionate about what it is that you're putting out there. All right. So you want to be careful in year one, which is the mistake that I did. And I'm not going to make a mistake in 2018 of hiring people just because they're good at what they do. You want to hire because of talent, because of, of the passion. Don't don't necessarily hire because of talent. All right. At the end of the day, people are always going to let you down. All right. The one thing that I also learned when I started my business was to figure out what exactly my limitations were, all right? You are going to need to create content. You're going to need to be in front of an audience. So you want to figure out, are you a good writer? Are you good at photos? Are you good at videos? What is your speciality? Or are you good at audio, 
all right? Figure out what your limitations are. Now, I've had all this time to figure out what my strengths are, and I've, I've realized that I can speak to camera like this, so this is how I'm going to be creating my content for the new arm of the business, all right? So figure out what your limitations are, what are your strengths, and then just work on those strengths and like I said earlier on, hire for the things that you're not capable of, but make sure you're hiring people that are equally as passionate as you are to carry on your work, all right? So getting a business off the ground can be very, very stressful and exhausting. We've been working 24 hours a day, well, around the clock to actually make this arm of the business functional and to actually make it viable because there's a lot of moving parts um, you know, in, in, in this side of the business that we're going to be working on, all right? So it can get tempting for you to work through, um, you know, through all that stress and all that exhaustion. And guess what happens? You're bound to make a lot of mistakes. You're bound to, to, to leave a lot of things, um, you know, hanging. But it doesn't really benefit you if you're going to be hustling, hustling, hustling. Instead, outsource for the things that you're not capable of doing. So if you're going to be going into 2018 and you don't quite know how to actually market your business, you want to start off with the new platform that we're starting where we are going to be bringing in leads for you. And all you got to be doing is making sure that you have you know, a, you know, enough cap capacity or you have enough capability to actually convert those leads, right? So you can't give it your all. You can't do everything in your business, no matter how good you think you are or how skillful you think you might be. You need to outsource and you need to have um, you know, people that are going to be helping you. And also you need a second pair of eyes that would actually help you see where you are going wrong. Look, Corey, how's it going, my man? And thank you so much for doing all the behind the scenes work. Um, you know, for the new platform that we're going to be launching on them. You see, when I first started my business in year one, I was going in with the hustle, 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 hustle mode. You know, and I was forcing myself not to even take weekends off. I was not even putting any limits to what I was supposed to be doing. I, 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 I forgot, not forgot, but I let you know, my, my family go down and, uh, you know, I had just recently gotten, um, you know, we just recently gotten together and we had the baby and all I just really wanted was to make the business work, but I forgot to recharge. I forgot to reconnect with my, um, with my spouse and a lot of things went wrong in year one. But if you are actually going to be able to step away, outsource some of the work and spend some time with family, you'll actually notice that every Monday when you start your work, you will be re-energized and it will actually help you get more and achieve more and you'll actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So that's another lesson that I'm going to take on in 2018 that I will use in the new um, you know, platform. I'm not going to work on it up until um, you know, I, I run run myself dry, but I'm actually going to be spending as much time with my family and using the business and the freedom that I've created with Live Long Digital as leverage to create this new platform that is going to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Rick Martin, thank you so much for tuning in. And Nicole Gallo, thank you so much for tuning in. So, you know, the reason for this video is to just really re- um, you know, you know, um, remind myself of all the lessons that I learned, um, you know, in my first year of business and also help you with the lessons that you're going to go into 2018 with so that you won't uh, fall into a statistic of those businesses that don't go past the five a year mark. All right. And um, one other thing that's going to make you go past or even, you know, make you really, really strong, um, you know, in your first year is to never forget the reason why you started your business. You always have to consistently look toward the future because if anything happens or if anything stops you or if anything doesn't work for you, as long as you know what your end goal is, it's not going to, um, you know, be a detriment or stop you dead in your tracks, you know, you know, because it's always hard to stay devoted. It's even harder to stay passionate like this. Um, you know, when you don't know um, if your efforts are being, um, you know, reciprocated by the market. Sometimes you go for days with no money, with no uh, feedback from people.
people, especially if maybe you do a live and nobody shows up for it, etc., etc. Okay? So in the first year of business, I made sure I reminded myself not to always look for instant feedback or instant gratification. And that's how I'm going to enter into 2018, knowing that results will come, you know, the longer I stick into the business because people are tired of one-click wonders. All right, people are tired of people that have a grand opening and a grand closing. All right, so you want to show people that you've got the stick to itiveness, and then they will start following um, through. So you got to look forward to the future constantly, no matter what's happening right now, no matter what's happening, um, you know, in front of you, because there is always going to be obstacles. All right, there's no way you're going to avoid the chaos and the confusion that comes with running your business in the first year or from the beginning of the year. Chedu Chuma, hello, my friend. Christmas box, Christmas box. All right, so like I said, it's hard to continuously be motivated, it's hard to stay devoted when you actually don't know if your efforts are yielding any results. So I always constantly remind me of the reason why I started this business is because I want your business to be profitable and enjoyable. So every time I wake up and I'm not certain what I'm going to do or if I'm not ready or if I'm not really excited about my work or I'm not really feeling confident, I ask myself, who am I to keep lying in bed when, you know, Sally's business is running down, if um, Effort's business is not working, if John's business is not profitable and enjoyable yet? There's going to be hardship, there's going to be chaos, there's going to be confusion, but if you know what your bigger picture is, it will push you past the first year, the second year, the third year, and you don't become a statistic, you know? And it, it won't fall apart, it will fall together, because you know what? Your bigger picture is what is knitting everything else together, all right? So if this is going to be your first year in business, congratulations, but I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. I'm not going to be saying it's going to be, um, you know, the easiest way to get money, et cetera, et cetera. If you're going into year number two, congratulations. Um, you know, it was a big fight uh, last year, but guess what? You have to start all over again at the beginning of the year. So take care of business in its, um, in its first year because that's where you get all the lessons. That's where you know what your market really needs. First year is learning. First year is actually finding your feet in the market, all right? It's as important to actually know who you are, what you're serving, and how people are going to be perceiving you. Or if you're going to be launching in a new product, make sure that you treat it as if it's your first year in business, no matter how old you are or no matter how long you've been in business. You need to present the best version of yourself, and that can only be possible if you know exactly where you're headed, what you're going to be providing, and who actually cares for those products. And make sure you yourself, you're growing as a person, because if you are not growing, you're dying, and your business will actually grow as well. When you're growing, it means you're attracting the right kind of clients with the right kind of pain that you and your business can serve, all right? And remember, your passion and your skill plus the usefulness of whatever product you're going to be putting out there will determine your success. Will people be willing and able to purchase whatever it is that you're putting out there? Now, figure that out. And if you really want to know about the new product that we're launching in 2018, please, please, please type in the number one and I'll be, um, you know, uh, putting you in the express line for you to be the first person to be invited when the platform is ready. It's going to be year one, but we all it's not going to be a brand new beginning. It's just going to be an exciting arm of the business that will actually be designed for you in mind to make sure that you've got a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.